You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's blog gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com slash blogs today to sign up for regular updates via email. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it's time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from the old Options Insider, as well as, of course, from the ever exciting, at least we hope so, Options Insider Radio Network. Take a couple seconds here at the top just to thank all you guys and, and just congratulate you on your great questions for all of you who participated in that q a we did yesterday with stock twits you guys kept us long we went well over the time but i think it was worth it uh, you guys just kept flooding us with questions i love asking you guys well having you guys ask us questions to see what you guys are thinking because you take us in all sorts of weird and interesting and wonderful directions corporate actions you know as well as your usual theta gamma fega all that fun stuff uh, so it was really fun i know some of you joining us and here you got more of all questions the easiest place to keep asking us of course, is live every Friday, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern, right here on the old Vol Views. If you join us on the old Mixlers, we tweet out the link. We put it out all the time. If you grab it once, you can set it and forget it, bookmark it, and you're good. And you can follow us and join us live every Friday, noon central. Or, of course, if you want to follow us in Mixler, you can do that as well. It takes a couple of seconds. It's, it's free and easy. You can sign up you know, with Facebook or Google, all the other, all your usual account verification standards now. And then, bam, you'll get notified the second we go live, and that's not just for Vol Views, we use this for TWIFO coming up later today. We do Option Block twice a week. We do some live shows throughout the rest of the week, too. So we'll keep you, uh, keep you entertained on the live side as well. And, of course, if you can't join us live, still download the old podcast, and you can, of course, ask us questions the old-fashioned way via the old emails, questions at theoptionsinsider.com, or on the old social media as well. We're at Options on most of the main outlets you know of, Sock Twits and Twitter uh, primarily just started instagram by the way I, I forgot i think we're options insider unfortunately they're not options we'll have to see what we can do about upgrading that handle but uh so if you're on instagram i think we just started a couple of days ago we have a whopping 30 followers there so far but uh, join us there if you are so inclined and enjoy our imagery whenever we have in studio guests like mr russell one of these days we'll get him in studio and then we'll take some nice up close and comfortable perhaps uncomfortable pictures of him and share them with you so you too can enjoy all that goodness there and of course we do love to hear from you guys, so hit us up. It's, it makes our, gives us a warm fuzzy at the end of the day. Speaking of us, I will be joined momentarily by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian. But instead, we got to make do with my other volatility cohort, my partner in crime. The guy who's supposed to be joining us in studio, so you should see the spread we laid out. Listeners, caviar, champagne, the whole nine yards. Then at the last minute, they pulled him back in to the mothership, the SIBO. He is, of course... Mr. Russell Rhodes, the man who has no name, no title over there at the SIBO. He's the man about town over there at the SIBO. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to the show. What should I call you these days? Uh, Russell at SIBO. <laughs> I still haven't sat down and found out. I know what I'm going to be doing. I just don't know what we're going to call it. 
maybe, maybe you know, and and I don't know what to put on the new business cards. So, but I I just keep doing what I'm doing, and people seem to be happy with it. So we'll leave it at that. Russell, the man who keeps doing what he's doing over there at the SIBO, which these days involves a lot of travel to various volatility meccas like London and Amsterdam and Tel Aviv and Kamloops and Krakow and all the places you, you associate at the tip of your tongue with volatility. If, it's the, if, it's, if there's a vol trader somewhere within 100 miles, Russell will be there, including the dense forests of British Columbia. You cannot escape him. And his various VIX study. Speaking of study and VIX, let's get to it. A lot popping off this week. It's time for our volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. All right, everybody, it's time for money, 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 like the song says. No, of course, it is time for some vol reviewing. And, of course, it has been an interesting week. Our prognostications actually not looking too bad. They were looking kind of crazy for a while there. We were just none of us were dire enough, except for Mr. Russell. You were actually flirting with her for a little bit. Uh, but now it's back in my territory and actually it might be closing in actually on the Rock Lobsters pick from last week as well. So we want Vix to come in a little bit over the show if we can uh, if we can urge such things here. So we'll, we'll be pulling for a little bit of retracement. I'm pretty close, but a little bit of a retracement would be nice. Plus the Rock Lobster isn't here, so he can't win. <laughs> All right. Those are the rules. That is made him up as we go. Of course, we are recording this and live streaming it here on Friday, right in the middle of the session here. 10-6 for all of you playing the home game. And Vix Cash, surprise, surprise, back. Back in double digits after it seemed like for a while there, it was threatening the, the eight handle, which is something we have asked you guys many times throughout the year. We're going to see an eight handle. Eh, you guys kind of hemmed and hawed, and it seemed like it was coming. We asked you guys again last night. Seemed appropriate at the time. Uh, we'll, get your, we'll get your views on that in a little bit. But Vix Cash, North of the 10 handle, about 10.13 right now. Most of the other indices pretty much unched or mixed on the day. Not a heck of a lot of action on that front. You know, before we get into the uh, nitty gritty of VIX cash land and all that kind of fun stuff, let's get into this, Mr. Rhodes, because I know you wrote about it and uh, while we get the meatball all set up here. And also, because I know uh, Saqib, our buddy over there at Reuters, he likes to send in are his articles to us for us to review on the site. He sent in a link to this one last week. Uh, we didn't have time really to read it on the fly during the show. Now we've had a little bit more time. Of course, I am referring to the article that came out last week in Reuters, which was uh, equity volatility schemes seem widely used by a Fed survey. And they had an interesting Fed survey, uh, which surveyed hedge fund clients, uh, nearly one third of the primary dealers and a bunch of Wall Street top banks about what they're doing. And there was an interesting little subcategory in there all about volatility. And uh, so I saw that and I said, well, I have to take some time to actually read this survey and see what these questions were all about. I didn't get a chance to. Thankfully, Mr. Rhodes, somewhere in your new describe job description, easy for me to say, somewhere in your new job description, you have to do that kind of stuff. So you actually read this survey and you read all, what was it, 48 volatility questions that the Fed asked. What were some of your takeaways from this, sir? Well, it, it, there are eight volatility questions, but they divide them up into like eight parts each where they they ask, uh, they basically are asking <clears throat> sell side type institutions about uh know what they're seeing with their clients in a very general way and they'll, they'll ask you know how are they positioned in the volatility space uh, and, and you know what have they seen you know trend wise over the last couple of years they noted at the beginning of the uh, uh, of this survey that the the popular press talking about short ball being a crowded trade uh, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, short ball being a crowded trade kind of led to them adding these questions to the end of a quarterly survey, which they call the Senior Credit Officer Opinion Survey. Uh, they asked questions such as, I got to scroll way down, I got to get down to question 81. Uh, man, who fill the people that, uh, I hope they pay the people that fill these things out because. Uh, this is not a five-minute survey. Uh, they asked, uh, how would you characterize the current use of volatility strategies by different clients? 
and uh, you know, the, uh, about 70% of hedge funds are involved in uh, using volatility one way or another. Uh, that's that's you know one of the one of the takeaways. But what I really found interesting was it was like relative to two years ago, how has the use of volatility strategies and products by clients uh, changed? And uh, it actually the the number of users has not gone up that much. For the most part, fifty or sixty percent of buy side clients. Uh, they said we're, they said they were remaining basically the same, which is mutual funds, hedge funds, all kinds of uh, different types of uh, you know institutions. And then they, uh, the, what I really was interested in finding was how are your clients of each of the following types positioned? And when they say following types, it's hedge funds, exchange traded products, whatever, uh, positioned for a sustained increase in equity volatility. And on the hedge fund side. 22% said that most of their clients are long volatility. 27% said more clients are long than short. That means half of hedge fund clients are more long than short. Then they said about 30% are kind of neutral. So that's only the, about well, that's 20% are, are more short than long. Um, so... You know, it, that that's that's the thing that that led to a blog. And uh, Mark Longo was joking around about uh, I got pulled into the exchange. And even though I was supposed to be in the studio today, the reason I came into the exchange today was because I had written a blog on this and I wanted to get it posted. And the only way I could get it posted was to physically come into the exchange. That is just but, fascinating, Russell, I about I the hedge fund setups. I know. I'm, I am. My I jaw is on the floor right now. I, I mean, will I pick it shocked. up. So you can talk. I'm picking it up. I mean, uh, I would have thought it would have been the exact opposite. Most funds are more short than, way more short than long. Um, maybe because we're in the space, we just see the guys that are short ball and assume that they they represent the majority of customers. When in fact, it's not the case. Maybe it's just are biased because we hang around guys that are, are, are just straight vol people. And, um, you know, I mean, that's the only explanation I can come up with. Right. Probably Mark, I'm, I'm going to have to reconnect you really quick. I think we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of feedback on your end for some reason. There we go. But yeah, this kind of, this kind of, that surprised me in a lot of different ways. First off that so many funds are, you know, more predominantly are leaning along because it does, combat that narrative we've seen even on i think of sakib's own articles about he think he, it wasn't him or maybe the journal who coined the volatility feedback loop uh but there has been a lot of ink about that some might say too much i know our buddy mark's buddy there bill valentine's been on the show a couple of times he wrote that big white paper about it's not a crowded trade and so a little bit more data coming in uh, to back up his side of the story there but kind of yeah surprisingly fast i'm with you russell i don't know who the heck they got to fill out these surveys because I certainly wouldn't do it, let alone a guy running a big desk. So uh, maybe maybe junior level c c clerks got assigned to do this. But yeah, this was uh, this was surprising across the board here. I don't know, Mr. Meatball, you guys uh, are you guys slinging a lot of long vol these days? Are you bucking the trend too? I mean, we're not. Um, but uh, I just think that that's uh, you know, I may, you look at the massive trades that go up. You know, we spend so much time thinking about. Who bought these puts and, you know, who sold this call spread? And then all of the massive trades that we see are guys buying calls in VIX or doing that massive million-dollar, two-million contract roll that's a long vol trade. Uh, you know, I think, you know, uh, uh, the volatility feedback loop was guys in our space that see people that, that know how vol works and are harvesting premium, feedbacking each other, assuming that, Everybody knew everybody was harvesting premium when that was clearly not the case based on this survey. That is just that is that is just uh, I mean, just completely changes the uh, the game. I mean, we do know that there's some more heavy retail uh, in the yeah. shortfall space, but you know, you talk to our friends, the Thompson Twins, and they'll tell you the institutions, you know, with their long long short strategy, institutions are terrified of short vol. And retail customers yep. are all over it. So there, there's definitely some, some, uh, you know, you know, some of these mini spikes are caused by the retail that we get stuff like in August. 
And maybe mm -hmm. the reason why we don't see these massive sell-offs is because the big institutional space is hedged. They've got a lot of long ball. Yeah, we've we've we saw that at risk management almost a year ago now, where we at the European version where we had people talking about uh, being more willing to be long stocks because uh, they've got they're they're playing with a safety net, and, and I think that theme is part of what has helped the uh, the equity market continue to climb higher. Uh, yeah, and in what the the initial thing that you said, Mark. Uh, about us being so close to the space that we're kind of shocked by this. Uh, I, I was having the exact same thought as I wrote this up last night. Uh, and, and what I really want to do is I'm going to do some digging and see if I can get hold of uh, who, whoever runs these surveys over at the Fed uh, and maybe even go over and spend a little time with them and, and talk to them a little bit more about this. What, the, the best thing about this survey in my mind is where they say, you know, the, the short volatility trade, uh, you know, being written up in the popular press is what prompted this survey, and the net result was opposite. Um, yeah, that's that's just incredible. I mean, it just goes to show I mean, you, you guys, that. You guys, mm -hmm. yeah. well, just guys if we've talked about this before, I, you know, I, and I don't know how publicly I said this, but uh, I did get called over to the Treasury Department about three months ago. Uh, and spent a day with those guys. And what prompted them wanting to talk to me was this same topic. And when I left, and you know, I'm really not supposed to talk much about the specifics, but when I left, they had a much better understanding of what was really going on. And they were a lot more comfortable with what was going on in the markets. So, uh, you know, hats off to the regulators uh, when they hear about something, checking into it. Yeah, that's, you know? that's good stuff. I, mean, I the, like the saying pro that. Act nature of this study and then you know just some other inquiries that I get every once in a while that make their way to me uh, it, it makes me feel a lot better about the regulatory environment uh, relative to you know like a decade ago there you go the power of all views reaching out there and uh, <laughs> educating the masses and the regulators sometimes about the truth of uh, the vol space getting into the vol space and what we saw this week it was an interesting week like you mentioned uh, Vic seemed like it was heading it was already hit was hitting some very interesting new lows. It seemed like it was poised on the precipice of breaking through to the aid handle. Alas, for all of you who had the downside in our poll, it was not to be. Did get, did get down to 9.11, though, before deciding, nope, I want to go back into single digit, or excuse me, double digit range, which is where we are now, 10 and a quarter or so. Continues to tick up, not the direction I wanted to move during the show. I wanted to go a little bit south now for my prediction to come true. We got a little bit more time. Like I said, hit a, actually, that, actually 9.11 was uh, the low, 9.13 going in yesterday, so we got even lower than that level. This is also, I kind of mentioned this, some people have been hitting us up with this stat. It's a little bit of a dubious stat because it's not really a month yet, but we're only six days in. But so far, of these six days, <laughs> October is the first month, quote unquote, uh, to be averaging a VIX in the single digits. Again, take that for what it's worth. It's not a month, obviously. Uh, but still, it does show kind of just what a different regime. And if you see you see this chart out, we have it in our show notes. We'll put it out for you guys to see, too, uh, that we some people have shared with us of just uh, the average monthly VIX averages uh, for the past few years and just how what the, what the steady trend, the steady progression has been. This, this quote-unquote month certainly... An interesting outlier there. Of course, Mr. Rhodes is the keeper of all things VIX historical data. Mr. Rhodes, our 9.11. How does that stack up, sir? And then also, uh, what do you... I'm sure you're getting hit up on all these VIX a month average of single digits. Uh, what say you to these early data points, sir? In, in uh, the early data points in October? Yes, that is the month we are in. Or... Uh, Okay, well, no, it's because, you know, sometimes it, it might have been with respect to uh, the, the rest of this year, which we're going to have a record low volatility year. I think we've all kind of agreed on that. Uh, you know, it's too early to tell. I'm, I'm not going to get all excited about October. Uh, so, you know, and it's, it's real easy for me to say because I'm always thinking volatility is going to be higher. And we've got a double digit VIX right now. So uh, the first couple of days of the month, I'm not getting too terribly excited. Uh, I'd, I'd be if we get through the first week of earnings next week and we're still looking at like a single digit VIX, 
uh, then then I'm wondering if October is going to put in a record average low like September did. Yeah, I mean, it's been amazing. Russell, I was commenting, um, you know, we started these sub nine VIXs on last Wednesday. So we had Wednesday, Thursday, Friday last week, and then we had the first four days this week. That was seven occurrences of the VIX below 10. Uh, I believe if we were if we managed to settle below 10 today, which probably I still think happens, despite the kind of squeezy nature yeah. of what's going on right now, um, that would be as many sub 10 VIX settles as we had ever had prior to 2017. Yeah, um, yeah. we matched it. Just fascinating that that could happen, mm -hmm. and we would go an entire week of the VIX not touching 10. Now. The futures continue to be very firm, and I don't blame them, because um, you know I, I, today's move aside, I think that we've got a better chance of seeing the VIX settle above 13 than the VIX settling below between 11 and 11 and 13 uh, in the next mm -hmm. in between now and the end of October, because what we saw was like this compression and then this pop, and um, September really led to a compression of the cash. And then the future said, we're not giving up on this because we've been fooled three different times. And so that that was really the way uh, that month progressed. And in October, uh, they're kind of doing the same thing. They don't really want to give up uh, much below 11 while the VIX is uh, trading itself in, in, in the mid nines. And uh, mm -hmm. again, I don't blame them. I was shocked when we got below 11 yesterday. And I, I don't think uh, even sub uh, sub 10, which I think we'll get to today. Uh, I, I don't think you see VIX anywhere near the VIX futures below 10 uh, at, until middle of next week. I think we need standard set. I think we need weekly settle before we get anything. VIX below 10 would be nice for my uh, my crystal ball. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, getting that would be that would be perfect for my little prognostication. You mentioned the futures there, Mark, and you're right, it has been interesting to watch. Again, today's move notwithstanding. Coming in this morning, there was uh, some decent, uh, decent, decent chasm there, nearly two points, about 1.8 handles between the front month and the cash. Obviously, that has changed now with the cash rally ho mode today, and about a little over three points for two months out, so it was looking pretty hefty out there. Coming in this morning, we'll see if we can maintain that or if the cash gives up a lot of this uh, rally ho mode it's been in so far uh, today. And of course, uh, the old friend, the SKU index, ticking up after having been spent last week pretty much about seven points lower, right around the low 130s. These days, back up around 140. So getting a little bit frothier, a little bit more uh, turbulent, perhaps. I think, you know, I think 150 for me is usually uh, the indicator that I start to pay attention uh, to the SKU indicator. But that said, we said before, a SKU indicator, always a little bit of a, of a mixed bag. It has a lot of different things feeding into that. So you have to really look into what the context that is driving it. It's not just puts are more expensive equals SKU index is higher. There's a lot more that goes into it than that. But still, for those of you who like to pay attention to, to it, I know there are quite a few of you then uh, that's where it's heading. If you'd like to have us break down the skew for you in a little bit more detail, come back in about an hour for Twifo, and we'll do just that. All things quick skew there, puts and calls independently. Imagine that, the magic, the majesty you can do there when you break them down separately. NASDAQ VIX also a little bit higher than uh, last week. Last week was about, uh, about 1280 or so this week. 1360, so getting a little bit of juice back out there in NASDAQ land as well. And now, of course, everyone's Favorite analysis tool, VVIX, also getting lofty, flirting with 100. Let's see, it didn't hit 100 today. 98.37 was the high today. But it's getting back to that range where it starts, people start saying, and not surprisingly, the VIX cash jumping a handle today. So there is some froth out there in VIX land. And VVIX reflecting that, like I said, right about 100. Usually in the last year or so, 75 has been kind of the low and up into like the 130s, 140s when it starts getting really crazy. Uh, so 100 certainly elevated, certainly means there's, Something to pay attention to out there. Speaking of things to pay attention to, put your headphones on, put down your coffee, get close to your monitor, because there's something to pay attention to now. Yes, it's time for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Ooh, they like that music there. That was loud. But, uh, at least in my headphones here in the studio, that was certainly loud. That woke me up. All right. Welcome to Russell's Weekly Rundown, listeners. This is indeed the portion of the show where Mr. Rhodes pontificates at length 
But all things VIX Weekly Options, we conservatively estimate somewhere between 25 and 32 minutes for this segment. Mr. Rhodes, have at it, sir. The floor is yours. Man, and there is so little going on. Thank God we had that Fed study to talk about. Um, even Monday, there wasn't a whole lot going on in the uh, in the weekly space. In fact, the only trade of interest was a really bad trade, and I apologize to the trader if they're out there listening right now. Uh, on Monday, uh, late, late, late in the day, somebody came in and used weekly options to do a butterfly. They uh, they sold the 10 and a half puts and calls that expired Wednesday or settled Wednesday on the open. Uh, they bought the 10 puts. They bought the 11 calls. Uh, they took they took in a credit of 44 cents. So VIX settlement between 1006 and 1094 trade works out. VIX settlement was 961. Uh, so you know they they still only lost six cents on the trade, but oh my goodness! Uh, unfortunately, they didn't get what they were shooting for. Although uh, you know that's trade. not a that's not a bad little it's, risk it's, reward. Risk I mean, reward. I know. I know. Betting, I know. betting that the VIX uh, is going to settle above ten uh, has been they, a, a relatively yeah. safe bet, even with the VIX at nine. Um, yeah. So, you know, if he does that trade with with this environment, if he does if he does that trade every week, uh, my guess uh, for the ne until we They're get gonna, a real break yeah, on okay. VIX, I think he'll end yeah. up making money long term. That's that'd be my guess. Yeah. So, have 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 faith, my friend. Event. Actually, the world will be your oyster. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, okay. if if Russell Rose <laughs> can become super ultra director of awesomeness of the SIBO, then dreams do come I true. Yeah, no <laughs> uh, my. Uh, the, the, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna have you talk to my new boss about that being my title. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could just see the look on his face. That, that would moment. be awesome. Hey, uh, I've decided yeah. Russell should be the super awesome director of coolness of the SIBO and then being like, oh, you have. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't that, know that that would go over. That'll, that'll ruin your chance of ever speaking at a SIBO event in the future. Uh, All right, back worry. to work. All right, so uh, somebody early on Tuesday rolled – Looks to me like they're hoping for a vol spike, and they, they rolled being long the uh, October 4th, 1150 calls. Somebody gave them two cents when they sold those, and they bought the October 11th, 1150 calls for 36 cents. So they rolled for 34 cents. Tried to work my way backwards. Couldn't couldn't find the um, other trade. Uh, in really big size, this is probably the, the biggest, most interesting of VIX uh, weeklies trades this week. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, late in the day, somebody bought, uh, did, did a ratio spread where they bought a bunch, uh, two, 3,000 in a lot of different lots of the November 1st, 17 calls, paid 40 cents for those, and then they went up to the 21 strike, the November 1st, 21 calls, sold two of those at 48 cents each. So each one by two, they took in a credit of eight cents. Now, what's really cool about this trade is anywhere below uh, about 25, they actually would make money at expiration on this trade. Get a spike up to 21 or the low 20s, you can probably trade out of it at a very nice profit, depending on the timing behind it. Most likely, this will be the trade that I write up in the blog this weekend and talk about some of the scenarios that would work out for it. Uh, and then, as I said, it was not a good week for weeklies. Uh, the only other sizable trade, I saw a pretty large uh, November 8th call spread. Uh, trading the 15 calls and the 16 calls. I went down and nosed around a little bit on the floor, and I got two different answers as to what this trade was. Uh, I was told that it was a bear call spread, and I was told it was a bull call spread, depending on who you ask. Uh, so somebody did a call spread, and the price was a dime. But I'm not sure if it's long or short. But it is, this is the quietest week we've had for weeklies in some time. I like that. Someone did a call spread for a dime. <laughs> print it. Print yeah, the news. No, I, 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 I got different answers, and I'm not going to 
Um, I, I, I've heard people say with certainty when they're not really sure what they think trade was. I'm not going to do that. So there you go. Russell Rhodes. If you traded it, shoot me an email and I'll tell everybody opposite to mask your <laughs> position. Russell Rhodes, man of integrity. That's why we like having you on the show. But that, that goes to show how difficult some of this stuff is to suss out listeners. You know, you see where it went up. It was somewhere within the spread, but that doesn't tell you the whole story. Sometimes even if you go down to the floor, to the pit where it was traded, you can get two very different tales. You talk to different brokers, they give you different tales. So there's a lot of axes to grind out there and a lot of agendas and a lot of people want to keep things uh, to themselves. Some people just don't know, make it up. So there's a lot of a lot of fluff sometimes you have to sort through. A lot of smoke to get to the fire sometimes out there in the options world. Well done, sir, on a relatively quiet week. Still... Still bringing the heat to keep the fire analogy alive. Not so much fire this week in the mothership VIX options. It was a decent week, but not uh, not the 2.6 million contract days like we saw just a week or two ago. Uh, today, so far, on track for a pretty pretty hefty day. I think it's like it'll be north of the ADB today or pretty close to it. Uh, today, about 708,000 contracts on the tape already, a little bit past halfway through the session. Eight, ADB, still a hefty 872,000 contracts, so... Put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's a lot of a lot, a lot of contracts hitting the tape every given day. The rest of this week was pretty much shy of that ADB, so that'll probably be coming down a little bit now. Uh, six hundred thirteen thousand yesterday, six twenty one on Wednesday, seven twenty three on Tuesday, and just shy of seven fifty k on Monday. That call the put still hovering around a three point seven. I'd say Mr. Rhodes is nervous, but a he's always nervous, and b it's been over three for quite some time, so he's been. I'm sure he's probably inured to this by now. <laughs> the rest of us probably wait until it gets north of four or four and a half before you really start paying attention to this bad boy. And what were the, non, the hot strikes? What's the big open interest? Where's all the action out there in VIX land? Well, surprise, surprise, our VIX whale continues to dominate the list. No matter where he's, if he's rolling to D, so if he's keeping it in knock, uh, you'll see a lot of, I think, familiar strikes on the list this week. Number one with the bullet. Our friend's new favorite strike, the D's 25s. Remember, he used to love the Oct 25s. Now they have fallen out of favor, and he has moved to December. The D's 25s, nearly just a couple thousand contracts shy of 600,000 contracts for our number one with a bullet spot here on our VIX options list. Just let that sink, for, sink in for a second. 600,000 contracts on just one strike. That shows, A, how much action was up in VIX land. B, how big that trade was that, that guy did. That's just one leg of, I think it was six. He, he had three legs and he had to roll it. So six legs on that trade. Number two, the D's 15. Surprise, surprise. Also, one leg of that trade with about 434,000 contracts open down to number three. The aforementioned OC 25s, 408 thousand contracts i'll check mr rose did he not roll all of it because there still is some size oi on his other strikes i'll have to dig at his previous strike so maybe he didn't roll all of it which would be interesting uh number four the oct 12s again that was part of his it was oct 12 15 25 that was the kind of risk reversal with the call kicker oct 12 puts the first puts on our list three hundred and forty five thousand number five the oct 20s three hundred and forty three thousand number six the oct 15s uh, also, again, a familiar strike, 331,000. Down to number seven, seven, the second and last put on our list, the Deese 12. So everyone likes the 12 strike, including our friend out there, 300 and about 28,000 open there. Number eight, the Ock 17, sneaking in there, not part of that massive trade with 282,000. Number nine, the Ock 21s, 260. And rounding out number 10, the uh, Oc 18s, just a little bit north of a quarter million contracts. Total of exactly 12 million open right now in VIX land, about nine and a half on the calls and about two and a half million open on the puts. Mr. Rhodes, is that, is that your impression? Did he roll the whole thing or did he leave some uh, OI on those strikes? Those strikes are still, unless everyone followed that guy into his strikes, there's a lot, still a lot open on those Oc strikes. Mr. Rhodes, have you found well, that mute button? He ab- no, no, no. I was I was letting Mark Sebastian go. Yeah, but yeah. he absolutely he, rolled the whole thing. He rolled the exact yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, he did roll the whole thing. Th- there were just a lot of people. So there were a lot of people that 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 set up similar trades. I've seen huge volume on the OC 11s and OC 12s uh, continuing this week. And uh, same thing in, in November and December. Um, you know, when uh, after Russell talks here for a second, I'll, I'll throw out some really fun trades that we saw this week. Yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of my impression. I assumed he rolled the whole thing because the size was so enormous, but there's still so much OI. I didn't think there were that many lemmings, that many moths drawn to the flame, but apparently there were because those strikes are still uh, up there in our top 10, clearly, and sometimes in the top five still, even though he rolled most of his paper off of it. Uh, anything else catching your eye, Mr. Rhodes? 
Anything else you want to weigh in on no, this trade? Just, I don't have anything else to really weigh yeah. in on. It's 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 just looking like that time of year when volatility starts to want to rear its ugly head when you look out the window. Yeah. Um, we'll, which I know you don't have in the studio because I've been there. So, um, Russell, did you talk about these November 1st uh, 15 calls that traded earlier in the week on the second? No, I didn't. No, I didn't touch on that. I think it was part of a spread that I couldn't get a full handle on. A, a, a guy, no, I'm looking at, on the second. A guy straight up sold eight thousand of them at, at uh, oh, sixty oh, cents. That, that's why, because I um I was only I I got to change the way that I uh that I that I scan these things. I actually scan only for spread trades. Yeah, this uh, guy straight up sold. The individual trades get yeah. I, it it mucks things. Too much so no I, yeah i missed it because i look at the market so yeah we had a big uh oct 15 call seller no one call seller kind of interesting um so here were the the big trades i saw a uh, customer came in and bought uh the oct 1823 one by three call spread 15 by fifteen thousand, paying 97 buying three uh future was about 1340 uh we saw some big oct risk reversals go up we saw the Ox 1723 versus the 10 and a half put uh, paper bought put paid 20, uh, probably a close. Uh, similarly, we saw the Ox 1824 versus the 11 put trade 30,000 times, uh, 51 cents paper bought put again. Um, this is one's kind of interesting. Uh, customer bought 15,439 of the D's 22s, sold 8,022 of the D's 17s. Paid eight cents, uh, basically a one by one point seven five. Uh, customer, this one's uh, far reaching. Fifteen fifty thousand of the March fifteen calls bought. Um, and then uh, I've actually got an ETN trade that we can discuss in a little bit. Um, also saw the uh, the Ox seventeen no nineteen call spread uh, trade fifty five thousand times. Customer paid. Uh, 47 cents. So we bought Nove. It was a roll. Um, you know, just looking around at, at a couple other things, there was an Ock 11 straddles uh, buyer today, which I thought was kind of interesting. Nothing huge. He had uh, something like four uh, 10,000 a buy, but uh, that that's kind of interesting. A straddle buyer. I don't think that's a terrible idea. A buck 41. Uh, you know, you're probably not in a, a position to lose a lot on the downside. And if we do get a pop, as I was discussing earlier, you know, we're going to get a pop above 13 or 14, not not uh, 11. And so uh, that's kind of what that play is. And then uh, lots and lots of OC 11 put buyers. Uh, you know, personally, I've been doing a bunch of stuff. I've been doing some stuff there, too. So uh, those were some of the more unique trades that I saw that were loaded with funness during the week. Um Looking to see if I saw anything else. Oh, uh, yeah, and I'll I'll talk about that VXX spread here. Uh, I don't know, Russell. Do you see any other huge VIX trades, or you want me to dig into this uh, this VXX sucker? Talk about double X. All right. They, so for those of you that don't know, in the crowd there's VIX, and then they call VXX double X because so, it's much easier than saying, you know, saying VXX and VIX. I mean, it's it just in a loud environment that could mess up with you because the symbol for VIX futures is VX. Um, so VXX, a customer bought 20,000 October 43 puts. He sold 20,000 October 4868 call spreads. Then he bought 30,000 November 3852 call spreads to sell 30,000 November 36 puts in a collar swap, uh, trading $5.80 referencing 38.30 in the stock. So uh, kind of an interesting trade in, in VXX. It's not something that you normally see. And by the way, that uh, VIX Ock Nove trade that just, just went up uh, in the last five minutes. So uh, those listening live are getting what amounts to live color. Um, but that, that double X trade is really kind of interesting. Um, you know, we're used to seeing these big collar trades in VIX. You're not used to seeing big, huge collar trades in VXX, but that's exactly what that was, was a uh, huge collar close and roll. Uh, I, I don't know. What, what do you think about uh, instead of using the, uh, the, the cash index, using 
a double X for a, uh, a hedging mechanism, Russell? Well, I, you know, I like doing a collar around where VXX is. If you think we're going to get uh, a moderate volatility spike in the middle of, you know, between now and expiration. So it's not necessarily a, a hedging type of transaction, but it's more of a, uh, if, if we just get, you know, if Monday or Tuesday, we get a little vol move to the upside and then we drift lower into Friday, what you end up with is basically an unchanged week. And I, I you know, I, I like, I, I've seen trades like that, but I also, you know, by reviewing what happens on a week over week basis, seen an awful lot of weeks where VXX doesn't do a whole lot, even when uh, we're looking back and talking about an early week volatility spike. So, you know, it's not the, the worst idea in the world. Uh, I didn't hear what the strikes were on the collar. I assume that it's skewed a little bit to the upside, maybe, uh, just to give you a little bit more wiggle room. Plus, you can probably take in more uh, premium on the upside than the downside. It usually e flattens out pretty quickly. Yeah, the, so the strikes that it, that he did, he did the, um, in November, he bought the 38.52 and sold the 36 put. In October, he sold the 43 put, so probably a close. And, yeah. or excuse, excuse me, bought the 43 put to close and sold the, uh, the 48.68 uh, call spread. So he's, this is a huh. pretty strong play on something happening right now. I think this is kind of a hedge yeah. over the top. Um He's looking well, for a move. I guess, I mean, it, he did this on the third, so he's mm -hmm. at a minimum not, uh, let's see, where are we? I mean, he even with today's move, he's still unhappy. <laughs> well, he probably thinks that that uh, North Korea is going to do something to, to ruin America's mood on that widely celebrated holiday Columbus Day. Yes, yes, the oft celebrated, which unfortunately we don't get off anymore. So, but even though we won't have shows on Monday, so, so bear that in mind, listeners who are going to tune in for Option Block on Monday. But as I mentioned, I was going to bring up VXX. I'm glad you brought up that trademark because that's interesting. You know, people have been hitting us up. They love their VXX. We've been talking so much about, you know, the recent reverse split and the inevitable erosion. It was just in the mid 40s, not too long ago. We were even seeing then, you know, set your puts. And sure enough, 37.64. That's after rallying a bit today, about half a handle. So it's trading right around 37 uh, recently. So this thing has already come off quite a bit. Someone was joking the other day, I think on one of our shows, they're going to have to do their reverse split again pretty soon if they if they keep this up. So all the listeners who were writing in, I think they were talking about some Jan puts out there. I forgot exactly the handle in VXX, maybe 25, maybe 30, somewhere in that range. Those are looking meatier right now. So hopefully you got in on those bad boys before all was said and done. Also, I want to go back really quickly. You mentioned that, uh, you know, those uh, the Vic Straddle buyer. I, I'm trying to think the last time we saw a size you're right it's not a trade we usually see if people want to lo lo load up with premium for vix it's usually to the upside so it's calls and call verticals or in this case uh, the ratios like you said usually see one by two but why if you like it one by two you got to love it one by three right so hence we saw the ratio one by three but we don't see a lot of out and out straddle buyers and yet we saw that this week which was kind of interesting again not for hundreds of thousands only about four thousand but still uh, that's interesting in and of itself and of course these days people people actually want that put leg usually the the put leg is kind of a throwaway on any straddle it's another reason why we don't see it printing in vix and yet these days Puts are active, witnessed by what we saw a couple of puts there on our top 10. So the puts all of a sudden have some juice. I mean, Fix was just threatening eight yesterday. So uh, the puts all of a sudden have come, come to life. So it kind of makes the straddle buy-in makes a little bit more sense. I'm kind of with you on that. I could see a little bit more interest, a little bit more action out there in all things VIX straddles. Interesting stuff. You got an interesting VIX trade you like? Let us know. Hit us up, listeners. Meanwhile, you guys have been hitting us up a lot. So we got to get some of your questions. So without further ado, let's do it. It's time for the Vol voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL, posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, right. or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol Voicemail. This is your portion of the show where you guys take the reins. We got questions from uh, 
all over the place this week. Really quickly, let's kick it off. Uh, we asked, we like to ask you guys questions every now and then, too, including uh, given the fact that we were threatening such lows out there in Vixland, we thought let's let you guys play along with us on the crystal ball this week and ask you guys to bust out your volatility crystal balls. And he said, hey, you know, Vix threatening uh, to hit the eight handle. What do you think? Is that Lumen or is this kind of just a blip? Where is Vix going to close? And we didn't make it hard for you and say, just do it when the show ends like we do. We said, just the end of the day, make it easy for a nice frame of reference you all can handle. It was going to be pretty much right where it was, which at the time was right about 920 uh, or so. So between 9 and 930 or lower, which was about less than 9 or slightly higher, about 930 to 960 or in that case, much higher, which is north of 960. I won't make you guys guess because I think the recent VIX moves have colored this somewhat, even though VIX is giving up the ghost a little bit. I like what I'm seeing right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, so it's been interesting. I thought the aggressive move would have colored it maybe a little bit more, but it seems pretty interesting. It's still uh, the winner, at least for right now, 32% saying right here, about 9 to 930. I think some of those people came in and voted early this morning before we saw the big run up. 31% uh, though, very close, much higher north of 960 so there you go some of the smarter birds the early bird didn't get the warm in this case early bird kind of got run over uh 24 saying hitting that eight handle lower than nine so we'll see you still got a few hours left doesn't look too likely but it's possible and 13 percent coming in the slightly higher 930 to 960 range uh you guys can still vote we got till the end of the day and you know all kinds of crazy things could happen. So let us know your thoughts. Speaking of our thoughts, we got all the reporters hitting us up today. Saqib, I mentioned, hit us up from, from Reuters uh, with his article about the Fed stuff. We already had, talked about that, Saqib, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Pretty lengthy discussion, actually, on that. It was kind of interesting. Uh, we got Gunjin now from Benergy from, uh, I think I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from Wall Street Journal. She wants to know, what were the hot strikes for VIX this week? Yeah, listen to the show. <laughs> she got to tune in. We just broke all that down. You can't just tweet in a question. You got you to gotta listen to the show. And no, it wasn't the eight half or nine strike like you were guessing so you need to listen to the show madam for shame uh but spoiler alert these 25s kind of a easy pick for the next for the foreseeable future you guess that and uh you're good to go i think maybe she's means maybe volume for this week as well so she could be misunderstanding what we're talking about here a little bit as well uh p biggers he asked this on Vol on option block yesterday i told him we would talk about it today on crystal ball he wants to know pretty basic question what strategy will long VIX, I think, he me, I think he means what strategy can I get long VIX while minimizing Contango? Uh, well, it's obvious. We just broke it all down. Just load up on all the VXX and then just go home and leave it. Set it and forget it for about, I think, two years is a pretty safe time frame. And you'll have all the long VIX you want with none, zero Contango worries associated with that of course i am joking please please do not do that you know you would like to probably sue us if that was the case all right that's it <laughs> pretty straightforward question we get this a lot mr meatball people are always out there trying to do this trying to get themselves some vix obviously you got the futures but they have the contango because it's built into them but also at least you kind of know what you're getting when you buy that future you know that level you kind of know where you are it's a little bit more straightforward than in some of these etps where the contango effect is masked across baskets and things like that so if you want to get long vix while minimizing your contango what, what's your mo sir well i'll tell you what i'm doing right now in for our fund, as I'm quoting up the ah quarter 16, 21, 26 uh, butterfly, with the way SKU structure is set up in VIX, uh, if you buy kind of near the money and sell out of the money stuff, uh, you can set up a trade that's relatively inexpensive. Uh, that's a better trade when, um, uh, one second, when, um, when VIX is low and VVIX is high. When VVIX is really low, that's when you go for the backspread. Um, and so when VVIX is below like 85, I'll try and do a backspread. So I might look at like the uh, like the 1621 put uh, call one by two, short one, long uh, two, and doing that for uh, I don't know, you know, pay, trying to get do that for even money or better. Uh, whereas uh, you're going to pay a little bit for butterflies, but they do a really good job of taking advantage of uh, curvature. Even money flies are better. You sound like your friend, the rock lobster there. Getting your juice for free, Mr. Uh, Mr. And I can't call you Dr. Vicks. I don't know what to call you these days. We'll call you Sebo Man About Town. Uh, what uh, You got any suggestions for our friend, Mr. P. Biggers? He wants some Vicks, doesn't really want all that nasty contango that goes with it. 
This is where you also channel your rock lobster and you hit the mute button, sir. Buy the front month and second and sell the second month. That's it. That's the best thing that I can come up with for you to do. Or maybe buy the first month and maybe buy two of the first month and sell one of the second month and one of the third month. But uh, going through the futures and playing the curve a little bit, that's the best thing that I think you can possibly do. Yes, it seemed like the most straightforward way, you know, because you, you, you can see the contango right there in front of you. So you can know how to play it. And if you do, if you're comfortable with those types of spreads, which I know some people aren't, calendar spreads, even in futures, they tend to scare people sometimes for whatever reason. Uh, but uh, that's, that's, I mean, you're just the most direct way to think to deal with it. All these ETPs, uh, you start really kind of losing uh, the forest for the trees and some of them. And you got all these weird things and the prospectuses and everything else going on and distributions, many things we've talked about before that kind of pollute the waters a little bit so yeah i'm, I'm definitely a fan of the the simplicity's sake and that that certainly is it all right uh, you got this we got this guy here he must he must he loves you guys mr meatball uh, f contango he writes in every show multiple times a week <laughs> with different things and he was commenting someone sent him a picture of what they termed a volatility sandwich and he said no it's not tasty he said only a greasy meatball and a rock lobster on the menu can justify volatility magic. So there you go. This guy uh, apparently loving you guys. Uh, he also, though, take it with a grain of salt because he also followed it up and said, I took a personal loan and bought VXX put spreads long term while I'm long some gamma on spy. Speaking of crazy. So maybe take his word with a grain of salt because he seems a little bit. Uh, it seems like a joke. He I can't so, imagine. I, I, would, I would hope so. And anyone who says, you know, he says they need you guys on the volatility menu to make a tasty volatility sandwich. Of course, we have to question their uh their sanity uh all right let's see how we got time for uh oof, this guy's got a long skew trade don't have time for that um hmm. this guy wants to explain delta neutral uh we could probably take a long time to do that as well <laughs> really quick you buy your deltas you hedge them it's gamma scalping see some of our earlier shows uh oh here's an easy one mr mr rhodes you can lay this one out for us this guy, Lenz, wants to know, when is the SIBO Asia Conference? When is it, sir? Uh, December 5th at 6th in Hong Kong. So, and you can find out more, and I'll, I'll tweet this out in just a second. Uh, I believe it's cboerncasia.com. But I will, uh, I'll tweet that, and you'll retweet it. How's that go? Isn't that cibo.rmc.com? Slash rmc.com? Asia.com. Asia oh, is that right? So I got up. I think if you search for CBOE RMC, it should come up on the page. They have all of them listed. Yes. There. They have Europe. They have. That's it. If you do, if you do CBOE RMC Asia.com, you get CBOE Risk Management Conference in Asia. Well, there you so, go. That works. So yeah. there you go. CBOE RMC Asia for all your CBO RMC Asia news. Meanwhile, we got to get into our final, final segment. Uh, let's see how we're looking. Uh, not too bad. All right. It's time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody. The crystal ball giveth and it taketh away. This week, kind of an interesting one. It was all over the place, like we mentioned testing lows, getting into the double digits again. Now we're just slightly, ever so slightly, into the double digits as we're wrapping up the show here. VIX just north of the 10 handle, 10.07 out there in the VIX cash, to be precise. That means my 970 was looking good until this morning, and then it kind of rallied past it. And then it seemed like it was coming back, but and did come back a bit, but not enough. That means, unfortunately, the Rock Lobster actually is the, uh, the ghost winner he guessed 9.99, and so therefore he was actually pretty close. But he can't win because he's not here. So therefore I win. Ha, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, he, yes, he'll, he'll get a de facto medal the next time he uh, comes back. Mr. Russell, uh, Mr. Rhodes actually, uncharacteristically scooping the low side, 942. You were looking good right up until you weren't, sir. So uh, this shows how fickle of a beast the VIX cash is. It giveth and it taketh away. So I'm going to go first because Russell is not here. And I like to go first. So right now we're at a 10.06. Like I kind of mentioned last week, I didn't see a lot that was going to really elevate us much beyond that outside of the, you know, random rocket man or, of course, some of the horrible events we saw earlier this week, which even that didn't really conspire to really. We've seen so much of that now. It doesn't really seem that is not enough uh, to really move the VIX needle quite a bit. So uh, I'm going to say we're going to be back 
kind of around a similar range. I don't think we're going to be as aggressively low as we were earlier this week, though it wouldn't surprise me horribly. But I, maybe I'll adjust mine down a little bit just for that sake. I'm going to say 9.65 for this time next week. And since the Rock Lobster isn't here, I'll let you go second, Mr. Mr. Meatball. You get, you get the reflected pride of place for him. What are you feeling for next week? I was going to say, he and I are our partners, so I should have I should have gotten the, the medal. He is your yeah. work wife, after all. Yes, indeed. You know, in, in our court of law, we won. I won because, you know, we're one unit. Um, uh, what was your guess? You said 9.65. 9.65. I'm going to say 10.01. Uh, ah, a little, little price is right, right to the north. <laughs> ah, ah. Uh oh, Mister Mister Rhodes, does that cry of agony uh, mean I, mean he scooped you? What What are you feeling, sir? Uh, I, I, he took my guess. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Let's take ten point oh two then. All right, I'm going nine point ten oh two. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Do I'm it. Ten thirty one. Do I'll it. Give you a little room there. All right, ten point three one. Mister Rhodes, nicer than I certainly would have been in such a scenario, listeners. All right. There we go. If that music ever wants to start, we'll try it again. There we go. <laughs> that music means, unfortunately, we've come to the end of another epic journey through the world of volatility listeners, talking about Fed studies, talking about the ever, ever amazing lows of VIX cash. The future is not playing ball. A lot of size trades in VIX weeklies and regular VIX options, including some surprise ones, one by threes, straddles, collar swaps in VXX, all that good stuff, plus a lot of your questions, how to avoid Katango, all that fun stuff. What a journey it has been on Vol Views. But before we go, one last time around the horn, see what our cohorts here are cooking up that may interest you. Let's start with you, Mr. Meatball. I hear rumors you guys have a easy VIX class combo with a row webinar coming up that uh, people can get access to. Yeah, so the easy VIX thing, we're going to have a free easy VIX webinar at the end of the month. Uh, the thing we've got going on right now is uh, we're launching the new breakout bulletin uh, where we're going to go through breakout trades. Uh, it's going to start with a, uh, a master class next Saturday on breakouts. Uh, and you can do that for $147 or sign up for one month of the breakout bulletin for $47 and get the class for free. So you do the math on that. And uh, if you have interest, just email me uh, info at optionpit.com and we'll get info out to you. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm in Grand Haven and I'm going to re relax and enjoy my uh, long weekend. Well, there you go. You enjoy your long weekend, sir. Hit him up. VIX break, VIX, the breakout bulletin, the VIX Easy VIX webinar, and indeed someday, hopefully soon, once again, the epic that was the row webinar that never materialized. But someday soon, they're going to get at it. Hit them up, optionpit.com to learn more and reserve your spot. And Mr. Rhodes, we just broke down the SIBO Asia Conference. I got a feeling you're going to be there. What else is uh, cooking up your sleeve over there in the land known as SIBO, sir? I'm going to Seattle. And I will be speaking to the uh, Puget Sound Market Technicians Association about using VIX as a market indicator next Thursday night. Uh, I'll uh, tweet uh, and and they've got spots left. So if you want to uh, if you want to attend, I'm going to tweet out a link to uh, uh, to register to come, and it's uh, free. So there you go. There you go. I told, didn't I say at the top of the show, if there's a volatility community out there, you will find them and threaten them I'll with an, them. Threaten them with an in-person yeah. physical appearance, and you have done so now. The Puget Sound, what was it, Market Technicians? Association, <laughs> which is basically Seattle. PSMTA, go hit the Pussumta meeting coming up, and you too can see Russell Rhodes. I told you, if there's, if there's two guys in a coffee shop talking ball, Russell will burst in between them. <laughs> so uh, check it out if you're going to be in the Puget Sound or indeed, like you mentioned, head on over to CBOE.com. Check out the risk management they got coming, as well as the blogs. Russell's actually putting up a lot of good content over there on the blog. So in between shows, head on over there. Check out what he's posting, and you'll find some good. Click on the weekends. A man never takes a day off from volatility. So if you're bored on the weekends and you want a little volatility action in your life, Russell, chances are Russell's got a blog post for you. So check it out over there, and, and yeah, I think you'll like it. And on behalf of Mr. Rhodes and the aforementioned Greasy Meatball and indeed myself. I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading, streaming, subscribing, tuning in live, all the fun stuff that you guys do. Keep those questions coming, and we'll see you next time for more Volatility Views.
Volatility Views is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's blog gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com slash blogs today to sign up for regular updates via email. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.